MSNBC contributor Steve Schmidt, knowing politics inside and out. He's worked on campaigns and the Bush White House. Uh, good to have you back, sir. Good to be with you, Ari. Uh, let's start right here, given your history uh, and your work with regard to leadership in government. Uh, what does it mean to you when the president moves to change these rules again when the virus actually hits the West Wing and they still don't apply to certain people at the top? Well, he's shown a terrible example to the country. One of the most important qualities of leadership in a moment of crisis like this is the ability to talk honestly, directly, clearly, so people understand what is the situation. So right now, the country in many ways is opening back up, but it's not opening back up because the coronavirus, COVID-19 is diminishing because there's less cases or there's less death. It's opening up because Donald Trump thinks it's politically expedient for it to be opened back up and to get the economy moving. And no doubt, there are millions of Americans who need to get back to work, who want to get out of their houses. But this has nothing to do with the public health advice that the president has consistently ignored since the beginning of this event. So it's just one more example in Donald Trump's profound mismanagement, his ineptitude and incompetence responding to what is an epic crisis in the history of the United States. And what will always be true, Ari, is this. This didn't have to happen. It didn't have to be the case that we'll lose by August, according to the model, 137,000 Americans, most likely more. We didn't have to have a shattered economy. We don't see this in other places around the world. And we saw at his news conference today, on top of the overt racism at the CBS White House correspondent, we just saw more delusion, more happy talk, more fantasy, more hmm. dangerous fantasy that in the end will get people in this country killed. Steve, and we've seen a president who was just completely overmatched by events from beginning to end. You mentioned that exchange and your view of it. Uh, for viewers to understand, I will play that. This was a back and forth about China, uh, among other things, and the claims on testing from today. Take a look many times that the U.S. is doing far better than any other country when it comes to testing. Yes. Why does that matter? Why is this a global competition to you if everyday Americans are still losing their lives and we're still seeing more cases every day? Well, they're losing their lives everywhere in the world. And maybe that's a question you should ask China. Don't ask me. Ask China that question, okay? Uh, and it led to a rather tense back and forth. You wanted to weigh in on that? Well, it just demonstrates, once again, his manifest unfitness. We see his bullying. We see his nastiness. We see the racism there. And the question was an important one. The fact of the matter is this. The United States is the epicenter of the COVID-19 virus, period. The United States is the place in the world where you are most likely to die of COVID-19. And if you do have COVID-19, equally between this country and another country, you're more likely to die from it in the United States. There was a columnist who pointed out that at the height of World War II, we lived in a country that turned out eight combat aircraft an hour, and now we can't make cloth masks and PPE. Our healthcare responders First responders are under-equipped. This has been a national disgrace, and there has never been a moment, not under a Democratic president, not under a Republican president, in our lifetimes or in the last 75 years where the United States has appeared more weak to the rest of the world than it does now. We look mm. weak and pitiful. We look like a basket case on the world stage with our dishonest, delusional, divisive president who just is not equipped at a moral level, at a mental level, at an intellectual level to be able to lead the country through this. And so we're less than 200 days away from an election that's just profoundly important because he demonstrated yet again today that he has exactly zero capacity to lead this country out of this. 
And it is delusional BS happy talk in the extremists. When Steve Mnuchin or Donald Trump say everything's going to be fine by the third and fourth quarter and will be booming next year. We're going to see unemployment rates in the United States north of 20 percent, maybe as high as 30 percent. We'll see all the societal pathologies that accompany that. We're likely to see political instability. We have millions of people who can't feed their families. We're facing an economic catastrophe in this country. The programs that were passed are not working for the people, right. the small businessmen and women, the people that need the help. And we'll find out how everybody gamed the system and how corrupt it all was when we see who got the money. But for oh, now, yeah. at every conceivable level, we have a president that has failed, failed in his duty, he's failed the country, he's failed to protect the country. And the man who said he would make America great again has made America poorer, has divided the country, and his legacy be, will be one of mass suffering and death that didn't have to occur in the economic collapse that followed that. Uh, you lay it out there really vividly, Steve. Uh, before I lose you, I wanted you to weigh in on something that I told viewers earlier tonight is rare. Uh, you know it and I know it as students of this. The, the Barack Obama leaves a wide, wide lane for Donald Trump. Uh, he just doesn't see it as his role as the, as the predecessor president to weigh in on everything, even though we know where they disagree. Um, but take a listen to this. It would have been bad. Even with the best of governments, it has been an absolute chaotic disaster uh, when that uh, mindset of what's in it for me uh, and to heck with everybody else, when that mindset is operationalized uh, in our government. That is new leaked audio to Yahoo News from a call the president was on. I just have about 30 seconds, Steve, uh, but your reaction to that rare rebuke spilling into public by former President Obama. Well, I think he was generous, if anything, in his comments. Um, look, the disaster of the response is hard to articulate. It's an epic disaster that Donald Trump has brought to this country. It's one of the great crises in the history of the country. And the truth of the matter is this. If Barack Obama was the president of the United States, this would not have happened. We would have had competent professional people. We would have done what we needed to do early. What would have happened is what happened during the Ebola crisis. We would have had someone like Ron Klain in charge of it, not the Confederacy of Dunces, that we see running around the West Wing. We waited for months. We see the Blame China campaign starting, but it is the ineptitude and incompetence of Donald Trump, period, full stop, that is responsible for the catastrophe in this country and no amount of gaslighting, delusion, fantasy happy talk changes that reality on a day-to-day -day basis as we will recover from this over a period of years years because of the two months where Donald Trump was on a revenge mission, hate tweeting and paying attention to all manner of stupidity, everything except his essential duties, which were to protect the American people. And he has failed his duty in a way that no president in the history of the American Republic ever has, period. Period. Uh, longtime Republican strategist Steve Schmidt, uh, thank you for your clarity and your time tonight, sir.